get this party started. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 movies where the world actually ends. She's not immune. She's a carrier. Are you saying she has the ability to infect others? Yes, sir. Oh my god. There are actually many things on board were rumored to be extinct, such as this. For this list, we'll be looking at films in which the world as we know it comes to an end, whether that be socially or physically. In case you don't want us to ruin any endings, a spoiler alert is in order. Which of these movies do you find the most depressing? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, When Worlds Collide. Based on a sci-fi novel from the 30s, When Worlds Collide concerns the impending destruction of Earth by a rogue star. How far away from us are they? The calculator will be precise. I would estimate about three billion miles. Billion? Well, if people start worrying a hundred years from now. The star is called Bellus, and humanity builds a space arc in the hopes of traveling to Bellus' single planet and recolonizing Earth. Less than seven days left. We're falling behind schedule. Trucks are waiting to load plasma and medical supplies. They should have been aboard now. Hurry, hurry! 45 passengers are allowed on board, with most of them being chosen by random lottery. You can take the ship, sure. Then what? Only 40 of you can get away. Don't you see? The spaceship successfully takes off, and Bellus destroys Earth as the remaining humans riot in panic and anger. Get me on board. Luckily, the spaceship finds the planet to be habitable, and humanity starts anew on Zira. Number 19, The Day the Earth Caught Fire. This British disaster film is well known for its visual effects, using brilliant matte paintings to display a convincing post-apocalyptic landscape. Are they more expensive apartments above the mist line? It's fantastic, doesn't it? It opens much like 28 Days Later, with a lone man wandering the barren streets of London. Through flashbacks, viewers learn that Earth was knocked out of orbit by nuclear bomb testing and is now heading for the sun. Supposing the combined thrust of the explosions shifted the tilt of the Earth. Oh, come on, Bill. That would alter the climatic regions. A complete change in the world's weather. This also causes huge amounts of climatic disruption, including increased heat and evaporating water. In a desperate attempt to save and realign the Earth, scientists set off nuclear bombs in Siberia. Unfortunately, the movie leaves the physical fate of Earth in question, as it ends on a tantalizing cliffhanger. What do you mean all that before? Three. Of course I didn't, you silly old bird. Two. One. Bill, let me. Zero. Number 18, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Viewers knew exactly what they were getting into with this prequel reboot. You want me to take it home? I can't take care of a monkey. He's not a monkey, he's an ape. As the title suggests, Rise of the Planet of the Apes tells the apocalyptic story of how Planet of the Apes came to be. You stinking bar off me, you damn dirty ape! The 1968 original contains one of the most iconic endings in movie history, with George Taylor realizing that the titular planet is actually Earth. You maniacs! You blew it up! In this film, test chimps are given a drug that increases intelligence. <laughs> Unfortunately, a gaseous version of the drug is fatal for humans. If you come home, I'll protect you. The resulting pandemic and the increased aggression and intelligence of the chimps give rise to the planet of the apes. Caesar is home. The next film, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, depicts a world in which modern society has collapsed. We've been through hell together. But you all know what we're up against. Number 17, The Man Who Could Work Miracles. This black-and-white fantasy comedy is adapted from H.G. Wells' short story of the same name. Well, what did you do for us? What sort of a deal did you give us for all the trust we gave you? What was our share? 
Wells helped adapt the story for the screen, changing the plot and themes to convey his frustrations with the British upper class and his fears of rising fascism and Nazism. How he came to me, I don't know. I, I just say to a thing, do this and do that, or be this and be that, and it seems to happen. In the film, three godlike entities conduct an experiment and bestow a regular British man with supernatural powers. True, I can prove it. Yeah. The man becomes utterly drunk on power and ego, and he decides to stop the Earth's rotation. Stop rotating! Stop! No! Ah! This obviously results in the complete destruction of Earth, as everything flies off the surface and is destroyed. The gods comment on their experiment, arguing that humanity is destined for negativity and selfishness. What did I tell you? It's all over. Gone. Number 16. These Final Hours As I speak to you right now, it's making its way towards our fair nation. When a meteor strikes the opposite side of the world, sparking a global firestorm, Australian James leaves his lover to travel across a city where anarchy rules in an attempt to reunite a girl with her family. I want my dad. Listen, it's just not safe here. Get in the van! And join his girlfriend to enjoy the party to end all parties. Hey, I've been going crazy out of my mind. An Australian film that is largely unknown in some parts of the world, These Final Hours deserves a great deal more acclaim and notice. You ever think you might end up in hell instead of heaven? That'd be awful. With characters that are far from innocent and a goal that seems fruitless, the performances, story, and situation have you rooting for them despite the odds. Sorry. I'm here! I love you so much. Number 15, The Cabin in the Woods. This clever horror comedy from Drew Goddard mixes old-fashioned slasher with meta-humor and Lovecraftian elements, resulting in a compelling stew of unique ideas. We are live. Engineering, we've got a room change. Hulk is now in two, McRae is in four. The story follows the employees of a secret underground laboratory whose job is to make horror movies a reality. How can you wager on this when you control the outcome? Well, we just get him in the cellar. They take it from there. The deaths are part of a sacrificial ritual meant to appease mysterious creatures known as the Ancient Ones, who slumber under the Earth's surface and thirst for human blood. I can only imagine your pain and confusion, but know this. What's happening to you is part of something bigger, something older than anything known. The ritual fails, and the ending sees a gigantic hand emerging from the cabin, indicating that the Ancient Ones will destroy Earth. Maybe that's the way it should be. It's a fun movie, but it contains one heck of a depressing ending. Number 14, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Based on Douglas Adams' iconic franchise, this movie concerns a British man named Arthur Dent. He is a five foot eight inch tall ape descendant, and someone is trying to drive a bypass through his house. Dent learns that his house is being demolished to make room for a bypass. Why has it got to be built? It's a bypass. You've got to build bypasses. Besides, you should have made your protest months ago. He then learns that his old friend, Ford Prefect, is actually an alien. What if I told you I really wasn't from Guildford? And Ford tells Arthur that, just like his house, Earth is being demolished by a race of aliens to make room for an intergalactic bypass. What the hell are those things? Oh! They're ships from a Vulcan constructor fleet! Earth is indeed destroyed by the aliens, but Arthur later learns that this was a mistake, as the destruction permit was signed by accident. The Commercial Council of Magrathea thanks you for your esteemed visit, but regrets that the entire planet is temporarily closed. Luckily, a planet builder by the name of Slardy Bartfast quickly gets to work on a new Earth. It's, um, it's, it's all there. You know, it, it all works. Welcome home. Number 13, The Day After. Undoubtedly one of the better television films ever made, as well as one of the highest rated, The Day After is a product of its time. Taking place during the Cold War and showing a worst-case scenario outcome of the conflict, 
It's an uncompromising movie that juxtaposes life before, during, and after the destruction wrought by nuclear war. Either we fired first and they're gonna try to hit what's left, or they fired first and we just got our missiles out of the ground in time. We're introduced to a world we know well and a wholly unfamiliar one at the same time, where surviving is not as easy as finding food and shelter. What, what do you mean no more? I've got three chicks with potted milk and two kids at home haven't eaten since the day before yesterday. I'm sorry, lady. Ending with a single stark voice calling over the radio in vain, the day after feels entirely possible. Is anybody there? Anybody at all? Number 12, Miracle Mile. I mean, for me, to find a girl my age who actually knows who Dickie Wells and Vernon Brown were, there has to be a cosmic plan of some sort. Just when a man finds the woman of his dreams, a phone rings and he finds out that nuclear war is imminent. We're talking real imminent. This for real, Dad, is no drill. We shoot our wad in 50 minutes. At times, Harry is uncertain that the end is in fact near and that the information he received was accurate. So he becomes increasingly worried that he alone sparked the panic gripping LA. What is the truth, Harry? Where did you hear we'd started a war? Those people at the helicopter said Landa told them, and you told Landa? God, what am I doing? Even so, Harry tries to find a way to escape his impending doom and finds himself going to great lengths to do so. We wouldn't be surprised if you've never heard of this cult film, but by maintaining the feel of an 80s comedy while tackling a horrific situation, Miracle Mile stands out as exceptional. <laughs> Look at that baby go! Number 11, 12 Monkeys. The world of 12 Monkeys is a bleak one indeed, taking place 40 years after a devastating pandemic wiped out most of the Earth's population. Games, they vegetize it. <laughs> See? <laughs> Yeah, if you play the games, you're voluntarily taking a tranquilizer. The surviving humans live underground, and a criminal named James Cole is sent back in time to prevent the outbreak from occurring. Just relax now, don't fight it. We're sending you to the third quarter of 1996, right on the money. The hope is that Cole will find the source of the deadly virus before it's released, allowing scientists to work on a cure. The world belongs to the dogs and cats. We live like worms. <laughs> We just need the information. Unfortunately, the movie ends with a stable time loop. Cole witnesses his own death as a child, and a mad scientist named Dr. Peters successfully unleashes the plague on the unassuming world. Biological samples. I have the papers right here. Well, I'm gonna have to ask you to open this up, sir. 12 Monkeys ends just as it begins, with the near-complete destruction of humanity. Number 10, Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. Once again, if you are just tuning in, the CSA Space Shuttle Deliverance has been destroyed. The final mission to save mankind has failed. The 70-mile-wide asteroid, known commonly as Matilda, is set to collide with Earth in exactly three weeks' time. If a mission failed to stop an asteroid from impacting Earth and the end of the world were upon us, we could do a lot worse than Kira Knightley or Steve Carell by our side. Instead, I am on the scenic route to the guillotine with you and you. After humanity finds out they have three weeks left to live, Corral's Dodge and Knightley's Penny befriend each other and try to make each other's final weeks happier. In Dodge's case, they do this by finding the one that got away. She must be really special, huh? Olivia? I don't want to find her after so much time. She was, yeah. And in Penny's case, by returning to her family in England. If you drive me to where I need to go, I can get you to your family but instead they find that they are the missing ingredients in each other's lives. Sure, their story may have a grim ending, but at least these two didn't go out alone. What do we do now? I just wanna lie here with you. Number nine, Threads. A brutal and utterly depressing film, Threads originally aired on BBC in the fall of 1984. Trying to get across to relatives in Lincoln. Not this way, you're not. Essential service is all of this road. The movie takes place in Sheffield, England during a nuclear winter, the result of nuclear war between the United States and the Soviet Union. <laughs> Up to 30 million people die in Britain alone, and the immediate results are looting, murder, and internment camps, and a lack of clean water and medicine, resulting in an outbreak of disease. Go back to your homes. The long-term effects are rising cancer and cataract rates, Deformed babies, a complete collapse of government and military, and a general return to barbaric medieval living. 
A lot of people just didn't stock up. How could they? The bloody shops were empty. And now they're coming out of the shelters. I know it sounds callous, but I think we should hang on to the little food we've got. Threads has been widely acclaimed for its uncompromising realism, and it makes for a truly harrowing viewing experience. Number 8. Snowpiercer Before making movie history with Parasite, South Korean director Bong Joon-ho oversaw the apocalyptic Snowpiercer. Doris! Doris! The movie is based on a French graphic novel and served as Bong's first English language film. Know your place. Keep your place. Be a shoe. Like Parasite, Snowpiercer is a wonderful work of social commentary. And unlike many movies on this list, the movie begins with the world having already ended. The story takes place years after humanity inadvertently started the new Ice Age in a failed attempt to reverse global warming. The few survivors reside in a train called the Snowpiercer, which is segregated by wealth. Those bastards in the front section think they own us. Eating their steak dinners and listening to string quartets and that. We'll be different when we get there. The Snowpiercer is derailed in the movie's ending, and a few young survivors escape, indicating a potential to start again. Number 7. Interstellar Nelson's torching his whole crop. Light? They're saying it's the last harvest for okra. Ever. The Earth in this Christopher Nolan sci-fi epic is no longer a lush planet where flora is plentiful. Food growth has become nearly impossible, and the future of humanity is in jeopardy. The last people to starve will be the first to suffocate. Primarily following the crew aboard a spaceship as they desperately search for a new, inhabitable planet, the shadow of death looms large over every scene. But there's a distinct feeling of hope that permeates the story. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. A visual masterpiece that keeps you guessing as to its next move and hits you at an instinctual level, Interstellar is a worthy addition, as humankind is forced off its home permanently. There are some things that aren't meant to be known. Number 6. The Road Cormac McCarthy is regarded as one of the finest writers in American literature, and The Road is arguably his masterpiece. Come on! His Pulitzer-winning novel was adapted in 2009, and it stars Viggo Mortensen as a desperate man who must keep his son safe in a post-apocalyptic America. Thank you for soup and Cheetos. Cheetos. And all this stuff. This movie is quite unique in that it doesn't explain how the apocalypse came about. Viewers are forced to just go with it, just as they're forced to accept the resulting ash, persistent cold, and roving bands of cannibals. I, I've done what you said. Please, Papa. Listen to the boy. How long have you been following us? How, how long? The Road is an uncompromising glimpse into post-apocalyptic depravity and hopelessness, and the movie is two hours of near-relentless misery. You can't take any chances. You hear me? I want to be with you. I want to be with you too. But I can't. It's a beautiful father-son story about hope and optimism, but it's also a horrific tale about the worst of humankind. <laughs> Number five, on the beach. We're all doomed, you know. The whole silly, drunken, pathetic lot of us. Doomed by the air we're about to breathe. The battle is not over even after the world has been decimated by World War III, for the nuclear fallout is on its way. The war started when people accepted the idiotic principle that peace could be maintained by arranging to defend themselves with weapons they couldn't possibly use. On the Beach follows humanity as it anticipates ultimate destruction due to the impending radiation sickness that is moving south to Australia. We're left with a world in which people are deciding either to succumb to the sickness or to end their lives themselves. God forgive us. A grisly window into the despair of near-certain doom, this film is a harrowing look at the outcome of nuclear war, the shadow of which loomed large when the film was released in 1959, and it still remains relevant today. There is no time. No time to love. Nothing to remember. 
nothing worth remembering. Number four, this is the end. Seth, so happy, happy you're here. Hey, Johnny, what's up? Hey, it's just Jay. When a group of self-obsessed, hedonistic celebrities gathers for a housewarming party on the same night of the apocalypse, the results are absolutely hilarious. Was released unto the earth. I love a dude, he's from where the wild things are. Featuring a who's who of this generation's comedic actors, as well as a few other random cameos. This Janet hate him, dog! I love him. Perhaps the most impressive part is not the comedy that ensues, but the fact that the filmmakers didn't use the impressive cast as an excuse to cut corners on the effects. Whether it was the standout appearance by the intentionally obnoxious Michael Cera. Have you ever seen a psychiatrist? or the performance of the six leads, this is a flick unlike any other on this list. I, I, I didn't like what I became, so I hated what you became. It's fine, man. It's fine. I love you, Seth. I love, I love you, man. Buddy. Let's die together, man. Let's die together. Number three, Last Night. A tiny Canadian film made on a relatively low budget, Last Night revolves around a society that knows their world will end at midnight and packs in plenty of style and substance. It details how an assortment of folks spend their last night on Earth, with one duo of strangers agreeing to take each other's lives. I'm not gonna let this world take my life. I am not just gonna pass away. At 12 o'clock, I'm asking you to shoot me. One family feigning a Christmas party. My, uh, my mother, she just threw this big Christmas dinner. She wanted us to relive our happiest moments as a family. And one man trying to experience as many new types of sex as possible before it ends. I just don't want to risk having bad sex today. Just don't want that to be the last thing on my mind. It may never be made evident what deadly force will take them, but what is clear is that the movie's strong direction, script, and cast make it a must-see for cinema buffs. Number two, Melancholia. The earth is evil. We don't need to grieve for it. Arguably the artsiest film about the end of the world, this visceral Lars von Trier joint is populated with character archetypes and metaphors too numerous to count. But the general theme involves the peace with which depressed people can face calamitous events. Listen to me. We agreed that you weren't going to make any scenes tonight. A newfound planet is set to collide with Earth, a somewhat obvious metaphor for the inevitability of depression. This unflinching portrayal of Doomsday is a majestic vision, told through the eyes of various different types of characters, all of whom have different reactions, all of which are relatable. I'm scared. We all are, sweetie. Just forget it. And while that may sound depressing in itself and does hit you at a guttural level, Melancholia ends on an oddly hopeful note. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Titan AE. Both Earth and the Moon are destroyed by a directed energy weapon. Knowing. A solar flare wipes out all life on Earth. The world's end. Humanity is sent back to the Dark Ages. I'm hard pressed to recall any processed foods I actually miss. Avengers Infinity War. Thanos snaps his fingers and half of the universe disintegrates into dust. You should have gone for the head. 28 weeks later, the virus spreads to France and potentially the rest of the world. Bandit selective targeting. All targets are now free. For more? Rooftop units, target everyone at ground level. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You'll have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Dr. Strangelove. Group captain, I'm afraid this is not an exercise. Not an exercise, huh? In fairness to the other films considered today, it's pretty difficult to beat Stanley Kubrick. Uh whole point of the doomsday machine is lost. 
If you keep it a secret, why didn't you tell the world, eh? When an Air Force general orders a nuclear attack on the Soviet Union, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, an Air Force officer, and the President come together to attempt to prevent an apocalypse. General Turgidson, I find this very difficult to understand. I was under the impression that I was the only one in authority to order the use of nuclear weapons. Uh, that's right, sir. You are the only person authorized to do so. Unfortunately for humanity's sake, the war room proves to be full of fools, as these men are not exactly cool-headed in the face of such impending doom. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here, this is the war room! In the end, based on the theme of this list, you can imagine what goes down. Cold War fears and detonating nukes have never been so hilarious. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.